Hi there, thanks for joining me for another episode of Mr. Ed Draws. And if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that I've been trying to learn how to program in P5JS. It's kind of a JavaScript that runs in the browser. And the reason why I'm trying to learn it is because I want to learn how to do procedural, algorithmic, and generative art. And they differ from traditional art in that they, they move, they're dynamic, they change over time. And that's just like the cutting edge of art right now, so I kind of wanted to get into that and see what I could do. I make these little challenges so that I could hone my programming skill and a lot of times uh, bigger challenges come out of these little ones and here I'm trying to make these shapes and I want to save these shapes in an array so that I can use them later. So I'm generating a grid of these shapes and in the process I'm looking at I'm like that looks kind of like a an alien video game or like uh, space checkers or something like that so it really got me thinking about how I could expand on this exercise and really turn it into something fun and interesting. A while back, uh, and there's a link to the video here, I made these graphics. They were alien displays, kind of the inside of a spaceship or something like that. This It's supposed to show off some kind of fanciful alien technology and it gets pretty elaborate. It eventually culminated in me creating a Star Trek The Next Generation control panel with lots of stuff going on there, but it's just static. It doesn't do anything. Plus it's kind of really complicated. So if I was going to make something to duplicate that, it would be a lot of work. So I decided I would start small and I created this template here that just has a couple elements in it and they're connected by lines and that's going to create the kind of the flow pattern, the intention of what this is supposed to do for the viewer. And I'll explain that later, but I just take this uh, template and start applying an overlay of animated graphics that I made in P5JS and you can see those here. Wow, there is a lot of stuff going on here, but it's not super crowded, it's not super complicated. And if you look at it long enough, you can kind of imagine what it's doing. You you get the sense that you could figure out how to manipulate the controls or understand the information that it's trying to tell you and that's a part of making sure that the the flow, the design of it tells that story. But I didn't have to be specific. None of this really makes any specific sense. It's just design and movement. It, there's no science to it at all. But if you do it right, you can kind of tell a story that maybe there is some deliberate intention, some specifics about it, something that's genuinely sciencey and not just uh, kabuki theater. So I'm going to go into the different sections here and kind of explain the design and kind of not specifically, but some of the programming challenges that went into creating each one of the sections. But before I do, if you haven't done this, hit subscribe, hit the bell, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, do all that. Uh, it helps out the channel a lot. And I really like to see what you guys have to say. So uh, looking at this uh, top right section, these are the bars that seem to be moving information to and from uh, the, the one major section to the other major section. And that information is appears to be changing over time at uh, um, random intervals. When you see what you see here are four objects, but the math is only being calculated really for one of those objects specifically. And then the other three objects are just being copied to scale that movement in that location. So as a programming trick, it you can be more efficient if you do stuff like that. And I didn't start out doing it that way. But in the process of duplicating things again and again, I'm like, I can do this a more efficient way. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. So that's one of the uh, reasons why I took on this challenge. And that was a lot of the benefit that I got out of it was learning more efficient ways of coding because there's a hundred ways to do something in coding and one of those ways is going to be the best and in terms of how short the code is how fast it is and uh, how easy it is to code basically so the other section below the one that you just saw here has a grid it has a space scene and it appears to be following some some dot so I wanted to give the impression that it was sensing an area that it was picking up some kind of reading and it was going to that area and doing a more specific scan and there are to the left of this these circles that keep moving back and forth and I imagine that there may be uh, 
doing different strengths or intensities of scans, moving back and forth, checking different ranges. And you, you can see that here. So the, the information that's changing, those characters that are changing, since you really can't see what those are, they don't really have to make sense. So where do I get those values at? Well, they come from inside the program. So these spheres are moving back and forth and their X value is changing. And all I do is just use that X value, display it underneath, and it appears like there's data coming out of this movement. So that was a really easy way. I didn't have to program or make up any fake data. I could just use what was in the program. So the little ellipse that's moving and it's got the characters written on there. This is something that happens all the time in programming where you have to keep track of where you're at when you display something because you don't want it to be displayed off the screen. So if you click on a menu and you're real close to the bottom of the screen, the menu is going to know to move itself up a little higher so you can see all the options. That's uh, a detail that a lot of people just take for granted, but it's something that you specifically have to tell the program to do. So here we have the text written in Earth characters, and they kind of make sense to what might be going on there. There's words that you recognize. There's like gravity and infra and EMRAD, whatever those stand for. And uh, it, that's supposed to make sense just so inside the program I can see which one's which so I don't confuse EMRAD line with the subline because there's nothing there to really make them different. So if I just made up whatever for those, I, I really couldn't tell them apart. At least if I have the English there, I can kind of tell them apart more easily. And plus I imagine that in the future I can make the characters flick back and forth between Earth characters and alien characters, make it look like the arrays may be being taken over by a an alien computer virus or something like that. So I'm going to go back to the alien characters and explain some of the design intention for this graphic. So I wanted it to not be specific, but I wanted the viewer to be able to imagine what information is there, even though they weren't able to decipher it immediately or at all. So you can see underneath the planets there on the left, there's this, this character keeps changing. A different character and it's arranged in a very familiar way and you can almost tell intuitively that maybe that's time so we have your hours minutes and seconds and the seconds keep changing more regularly and the other characters change so if you watch that you'll see that happening so that's information that it's telling the viewer without really telling them it so it you're getting this you're able to use your imagination to try and figure out what's happening there uh, at the top right, I'm, I imagine that maybe the information being displayed is has to do with the energy levels of the sensors or the, the scans. And at the the bottom right, that rectangle that's just changing colors, maybe there's some kind of alert status, and that's the information that's being derived from whatever the object is that's moving around on the screen. And then that information is being moved over through the circles in the center and all it's all of that information is being picked up by the green rectangle that's moving up and down the screen on the left hand side so even though you don't know what's going on specifically you can almost imagine how the information is being moved through what the different parts might stand for what they may represent in some kind of reality and it it gets you thinking and kind of imagining a, a story to go along with this in programming this, there are scores of procedures. There are dozens of elements that have to be described using those procedures. So even though every, the you know, one for one, they're fairly simple. Organizing it all together and getting it to, to fit together got kind of convoluted. So if you aren't really good at organizing and making things efficient, this could have been a, a real Harry Mary. But it helped me get better at that and that's what I liked about this project. I hope you like this artwork. I hope you like what I'm doing here on my channel. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Be sure to hit subscribe if you haven't hit that bell to be notified. And as always, until next time you guys, take care.